Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In the previous section we took our first look at macros. We created a macro to display a hello world message and another message and we talked about some of the properties and uses of the macro editor and so on in Access 2013. In this section we're going to look at some more practical examples of macros and we're going to look at different ways in which you might use macros within an Access database to perform specific tasks. Now when we ran the Hello World example in the previous section we clicked on a button or we double clicked on the name of the macro in the navigation pane. We performed some kind of action, made some event happen in order for the macro to run. And generally speaking macros will run in Access 2013 on the basis of an event, something happening. And in fact, a lot of the usage of macros, and in fact the usage of VBA, is event driven. Something happens and a macro runs. Something happens and some VBA code runs. Now what we're going to do in this case is we're going to actually set up an event, the clicking of a button. And we're going to make the clicking of a button make our MCR Hello World macro run. So what I'm going to do is to create a new form and just put a button on it. So there's my form, I'm going to go to the design tab, go to the controls, select command button, that one, draw a command button, make sure it's selected, then over to the property sheet, the caption I'm going to put on this button is of course hello world. And now what I need to do is to associate the event that I want to happen with that button. So making sure that the button is selected I click on the event tab and the event I'm going to add is an on click event. So when I click this button what's going to happen? Well let's look at the drop down here and what I want is MCR Hello World. I want that macro to run. If I clicked on event procedure I'd be taken into an editing screen where I could actually enter the details of an event procedure but on this occasion I'm just going to go for the hello world macro and basically now let me just close the property sheet now let me open the form in form view normal way click on that button and of course my macro runs my macro has still got two message boxes in it by the way so on this occasion that macro is now being driven by the event of me clicking on that button. One of the big advantages of macros of course is that if you've got a sequence of events that may run from various different places you can actually assign that macro as the macro runs when that number of different events happens. So effectively macro code is reusable throughout your application. Now, largely speaking, the use of access, particularly as you get into more advanced aspects of designing database, is about events and what happens when certain events occur. I've actually assigned that macro to the on click event for this button. Let me just show that you could actually assign it to any of these events. If you're not familiar with Windows events, you can actually look up what these mean. But let's take something like mouse move. And what if I assigned that same macro to mouse move, what would happen is if ever I moved the mouse over that button, then the hello world messages would pop up. So having made that change, let me just go into form view again. Let me just move that around. I'm not clicking. Watch what happens when I move over the button. I get those messages. Now you might get the impression that that's going to go on forever and in fact it might but if I just move away on the second one click on OK and don't move the mouse over the button again I can actually get rid of it then I can go back into design view and I can change that setting back again. So you can assign that macro to any event associated with that button and in fact pretty much to any event that occurs in your access database. So that's a very very powerful arrangement but also as you've seen just there one that you've got to be a little bit careful with shall we say. 
We're now going to look at a macro in Access 2013 that has a very special role. It's called the Auto Exec macro. And many of the databases that you see will have an Auto Exec macro. I'm looking at the Assets database that we created quite a bit earlier on in the course. And if you look at the list of macros, there's one there. Auto exec. It needs to be spelt with exactly those eight characters, auto exec. And the thing that's special about an auto exec macro is that if you open an access database and it has an auto exec macro, then that auto exec macro is executed when you open the database. And it's executed after any startup options are applied. So basically, when you open an access database, what happens is the startup options are applied, and then if there is an auto exec macro, it's executed. If there isn't an auto exec macro, it doesn't cause a problem, you don't get an error message or something, there's just nothing to be executed. Now, an auto exec macro is just like any other macro, and if you want to see what it does, we can just go into design view for auto exec. And there it is. It's actually got two actions. It's got an action of open form, and then it's got a program flow if statement. Now, I'm not going to look at the if statement first. I'm going to start with the open form. So let me just collapse the if statement. I can either use one of those buttons that we saw earlier, or I can just click on the minus sign to the left of it. And let's just look at open form for the moment. Now, the open form statement has quite a few arguments. It's got a form name, which in this case is asset list. And basically, it's the presence of this open form statement that causes the asset list to be displayed every time we open this database. If that open form wasn't there, you could try this yourself, actually. If you delete that open form statement, that asset list, you can see the tab of it there, that wouldn't appear every time we open this database. However, it does, and let's run through the arguments. First of all, which view would we like it in? Well, the views for a form, we can choose between form view, the standard view, design view, print preview, datasheet view, pivot table, pivot chart layout. So choose the view that you want. Form view seems the right one in this case, but obviously we may want to go say into datasheet view if we want to actually do some data maintenance by default in datasheet view, but let's stick with form. You can then choose whether you want to apply a filter. So it may be that you want to open this form, but at the startup you want a filter applied and maybe even a where condition. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with all these different views. You're familiar with filters, you're familiar with where conditions. And then as far as data modes concerned, you have a choice of do I want it in add data mode, in edit mode, or read only mode. If I leave that blank, then it will get its default value. And then the window mode choice is normal, hidden, icon, or dialog. We're just going to go for normal here. So that first action causes the asset list form to be opened with what is basically its default settings. So the open form statement, the first statement is always executed. The second action is an if. And therefore the if condition is checked. And if it's true, another form is opened. Now you may be able to guess by looking at this what it's actually doing. It says if D first show getting started settings then open the getting started form. You can probably guess that somehow or other it's checking to see whether the setting is set that says the getting started form is going to be shown. And if it is, then it says open form, form name getting started, view form, etc. So it's another open form statement. We've been through open form statements in the arguments just now. So really, the only thing we need to look at is how this thing works. If D first, show getting started settings then. Now the key here is this statement, the D first, and I need to explain to you what D first means. But before I do that, I want to look at the settings table. Now you may recall that when we split this database, we actually restored the settings table to being a local table. 
and if I just open that table up you may recall that in that table there's a single field called show getting started and there's actually only one record with that one field well technically it's got two fields because it's got an ID but there's only one record and the value of that field at the moment which is basically a yes no value is currently no so somehow or other that D first statement is saying what's the value of show getting started it's currently false and because its value is false we're not seeing the getting started field so part of it is to do with this table so let me close that table again and let me go to now the getting started form let's go into design view for the getting started form now in the getting started form if I look at its properties I will find that from a data point of view it actually has a record source again I'm going to assume you're familiar with record sources for forms and its record source is the settings table so although this form appears to be an informational form it's got links to a couple of videos to it giving information about how to use this database it's actually got a record source of the settings table so it's actually effectively bound to that settings table and that's an important part of the linkage here and if I go down to that field that checkbox at the bottom and open the property sheet again but this time for that checkbox its control source is show getting started which is the field in the settings table so when we've been checking on and off this checkbox we've actually been doing something that's linked to the show getting started field in the settings table and that's how we've been changing the value of that field in our database table so that's the background information that you need let's now click in there actually take a look in more detail at what this D first is doing if I click in there as you can see it changes the presentation it allows me to go in and edit this expression within the if statement but just to the right of it there's a link there through to the expression builder so let me click on expression builder button you should be familiar with the expression builder I want to know what D first does so let's go into functions it's a built-in function make sure all selected here let's go down and find D first and then I'll get some help on what D first actually does down at the bottom now it says that D first returns a random record from a particular field in a table or query when you simply need any value from that field now that might sound a little bit sort of random and uncertain to you and I suppose it is really but bear in mind that in the settings table we only have one record so a random record well it can only be that one and the name of the field show getting started is the one we're interested in because we want to know whether it's true or false there is a third argument here criteria we've only got two arguments in our use of D first so the third argument which is optional we're not actually using in this case so in effect what the D first is saying in this case is get me the value of show getting started in the only record in the settings table and it'll either be true or false so if we go back then to our auto exec macro if it's true open the form getting started if it's false you don't so in this section we've looked at another example of an auto exec macro and we've also looked at how we can use a program flow statement to make a macro react to its environment in this case we've decided whether to display a getting started screen on the basis of a value of a field in a table in the next section we're going to look at a different auto exec macro showing another important feature and then we're going to look at some security issues related to macros so please join me for that